welcome back to my greenhouse. A lot of people have been asking me what is happening in here and I figured I would take you on a tour. So welcome and here's what's going on. This is my little raised beds that I have in here. This is, some of you would know what this is called. I don't even know what this is called, but it's some kind of Asian um, plant. And we have a couple more here. They're fantastic in stir fries. This one's doing really great. Then we have romaine. Look at these heads of romaine lettuce. Lots of these. They're really hearted up, different colored ones. And then over here, I really enjoy growing this. This is um, Chinese cabbage, lots of Chinese cabbage growing over here. So this is a ton of fun. And I'm gonna take you down this aisle and we're gonna go up and down the different aisles and then we have a few things we're gonna talk about over here by the table. So come with me. So here we have green beans. You may not have thought you could grow green beans in a greenhouse, but you can. They grow really well. If you wanna look under here, look at all of these green beans. They are actually desperately in need of harvesting. Lots and lots and lots. I harvested some last week and I don't know if you can see. Those ones are just plain green, but these ones are really neat. These are all different colored ones. You see the color of these? I harvested most of these off and, uh, well, you would think, but here's still lots growing. And these purple ones, I wish I could have. Oh yeah, here's, here's a beautiful looking one. I'll pull him off so you can see. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? These beautiful purple looking, all different kinds. Oh yeah, there's lots here. Look, look at these. Wow, look at that. See, I get so much excitement out of all of this fun stuff. I wish you were here and you could help me harvest this lot because I've got to harvest this and then I've got to figure out what else to do with it. <laughs> Usually I can them. I was talking to my mother just a few minutes ago and she said, oh, back in the day we would salt them and they would cut the, the um, you know, they would top and tail the bean and then maybe cut it in half and put it into jars of salt. And that was how they preserved it back in the day. Of course, you can freeze them these days. I like to can them. And so we may well do a program about how to do that, all that kind of good stuff. Here we have zucchini. We have, I've been making zucchini patties every week. We have got lots and lots of zucchini patties in the freezer. Um, still lots, oh my, I didn't even see this guy. Look at this. I didn't see him until now. <laughs> didn't know he was there. In fact, I'm almost at the point of not looking because I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is another day making zucchini patties. Uh, and there's some really wacky looking ones that need to, yeah, something needs to happen to them. And they ha we have squash going on in here. I'm not sure. I think I can see one that we probably need to get. Oh yeah down here. He's a nice little bent fellow. And then, and I'll show you more, but lots and lots and lots of container tomatoes. Love to grow these. And you can really get a big harvest off of container tomatoes. And if you look, pushing out lots and lots more flowers. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot of a harvest going on here. Something that everybody really enjoys and is super, super nutritious is kale. And if you saw the previous program that I, where I talked about how to start seeds, that was because I had a lot of questions about how do we grow seeds. I just want to say everything you're seeing in here today grew from seed in our house got transferred over here onto these big tables. There were heat mats and seed trays. And as they got bigger, it all went into the various places that you now see them. So that's pretty exciting for me. And one of the things I had was demonstrating how to actually sow seeds. And I sowed a dozen rainbow kale seeds. And then several times on Facebook since then, I have given you updated pictures on those kale plants. Well, here they are. This is rainbow kale. That I didn't know what that was going to be, it, but it was all different kinds and colors of kale. And just take a look at this. Isn't this incredible? Just look at this. It's so beautiful and all different kinds. Here's another one of those big heads of kale. And then there's this really neat kale. Um, and let me show you down here. This is a really pretty one. Just take a look at this. Isn't that super pretty? And in there it's all like, if you look at the leaves, how pretty that is. 
and super duper nutritious. I'm doing a little ad here also for a program in the future. I'm going to do a program on what do you do with all of this? <laughs> You're wondering what I'm going to do with all of this. I'm wondering too. But we're going to do programs on how you can freeze kale, how you can turn it into smoothies, how you can make kale chips, all kinds of things you can do with kale. So anyway, wait for that to come. But let's move further on. Now this is a little, this grows in the greenhouse, but it's not amazing. Let me show you. We have, this is broccoli. Now you'll notice that each one of these plants, I have cut out the center. So as the broccoli comes to a head, you cut it out and then you will get these that you can also harvest afterward. It's, it grows in a greenhouse because I don't have outside gardens to put it. And it, it does pretty well, but it's probably not the best use of the space. But I grew everything that germinated and grew into plants. And I, in fact, I have, we just pulled out some broccoli today that I couldn't face throwing away, and so I planted it anyways. Um, down here we have cauliflower. I don't know if there are any heads to be looked at yet. I don't think so. Oh yeah, look at this. Come and see this itty bitty cauliflower that's coming. So that'll be fun. And then we have Swiss chard. And then these cabbages really thrive in the greenhouse for some reason. They love it in here. Looks like something got into that. But um, anyway, red cabbage, lots of regular cabbage. Look at these heads really firming up beautifully. And um, yeah, they love it in here. And now I want to show you tomatoes. So I like to grow all kinds of tomatoes. And one of the things I did last year, by accident, I bought some seeds that were container tomato seeds. And I put them in my main tomato area where the big vines are, which we're gonna show you in a minute. And they didn't grow very tall. And I went back and looked at the packet and realized what I'd done. And so I pulled them out of the ground and I put them into containers and they were phenomenal. And so this year I intentionally planted container tomatoes and we're going to harvest look at these aren't these just amazing don't you wish you were here i wish you were here because you could be helping us eat this lot <laughs> because we have so many of these and they are i don't if you leave them too long on the vine i used to leave them until a whole bunch would be red like all of these would be the same color and i found out that they split through the heat so nowadays I leave them on the vine or I, I get them off the vine pretty much as they're ready to harvest. And these little things are just plopping off here. And you know, these are like for the children, this is like candy. Seriously, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and I can't, I won't keep you here all day as I'm, as I'm harvesting, but you can just see what a joy. Now you can see that not everything of mine comes out perfectly. This guy was an extra plant. I didn't have a proper container for him, but I thought, you know, I'll put him in a five gallon bucket. Well, I forgot to put, get my hubby to drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket. And so it was overflowing with the irrigation. And uh, yeah, as you can see, not doing too good, still pushing out some red tomatoes that we can harvest, but yeah, not doing quite so well. Um, so over here, oh, let me show you this. So these are jalapenos. Again, not really doing that fantastic, not pushed out many flowers, but anyway, just to show you that not everything's perfect here in my greenhouse. And here are vines, all kinds of fun things. These are some yellow um, tomatoes intentionally. That's, that's ripe and ready to go. And um, you'll notice my tomatoes go a bit wild. I just kind of let them have at it and it seems to work well. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, now we have all kinds. So these, so those, what you just saw were cherry container tomatoes. And I've got like a dozen in here, all different corners. There's one right here, another one right here. Whatever little space I've got, I plop those in there. But that's not all. So right here, just beginning to ripen aroma tomatoes. They're just coming on lots and lots and lots of aromas growing in there. And then over here, I try to keep the varieties together so I don't get confused. <laughs> over here, look at that. I don't know if you can see, it would have been better the other side, but can you see the size of that baby? 
<laughs> Look at him. And then there's another big one, beefsteak tomatoes. So we have beefsteak, Roma, and lots of varieties of cherry. And then I just want to get my little cutter because you're helping me to harvest something else. Um, here I don't, I'm being a British girl, I don't grow American cucumbers, I grow English cucumbers. And here they are on the vine and they are ready to harvest beautiful English cucumbers. And what I actually do with these, there's no way that we could eat everything. There's more up here. There's no way that we could eat all of these. But I found a place where I can sell them. And I have to, I learned this year, gardening every year you learn something new. This year I learned that if you wrap them in plastic, like a saran, saran wrap or something along those lines, um, they will stay crisp and really beautiful. So that's what I do. I wrap them in plastic and then they go to market and I sell those. So that is real fun. Oh, last thing along here to look at. Yep, there's more. And then you can see on the end there are some really, I'm gonna harvest those three actually. They're just absolutely perfectly ready to harvest. And um, these will be going to market later in the week. And then the last thing to show you right here, which I always love to grow, it's not easy to grow, but I love to grow, is celery. And let's see the celery plants in here. And round here, we, we kind of harvest, we don't chop off the whole plant, we just cut off leaves as we go. And um, we'll have celery most of the season. It gets a little bit tough later in the season, but that is a ton of fun to grow. So how do we get all of this to grow? Well, of course we don't, it's what God does. But what is it that we have to do to play our part to do this kind of a thing? Well, there's a great quote here in the book Child Guidance on page 56, and it says, no one can succeed in agriculture or gardening without attention to the laws involved. The special needs of every variety of plant must be studied. Different varieties require different soil and cultivation and compliance with the laws governing each is the condition of success. So we've got to have a little bit of an intelligent idea about what we're doing. And of course, apart from having decent soil to start with, and that's very important. And by the way, just in case you thought this was just a gardening program, I'm going to allude to how this connects to how we raise our children in just in a minute. But just wanted to get back to the actual gardening process. Got to have decent soil. Then into that decent soil, we got to put decent seeds. If we have seeds that are junky, and this year I have got some junky seeds. Because of COVID, I was not able to get all the seeds that I usually like to grow. Had to get some from elsewhere, and some of those did not turn out good. So you got to get to knowing the seeds that work good for you, that have decent seeds to start with but to plant those first and we talked about that in that seed starting video and then you've got to have water that's really important this is our first year with irrigation that's automatic and I am really excited about that it's made my life a lot simpler I have it timed so that it comes on morning and evening and everything is getting watered as you can see it's all beautifully healthy looking it's getting plenty of water but not too much if you overwater when you're gardening it's almost worth Worse than if you underwater so water is important and then food plants need to be fed if you don't feed them guess what you don't get you don't get fruit you often get a lot of foliage and no fruit if you don't put decent food so different things require different kinds of food so there's all different kinds here I've got lots of other different kinds that I use but it is very important to regularly feed those plants and then as the quote said understanding the needs some plants need to be next to other plants some plants need you know different depths of soil or different kinds of soil so we have to understand what they need and seek to cultivate those very things that they need now you can already begin to tell where this is going and it's the same for the hearts and the lives of our children in fact let me read you a couple of other quotes that allude to that now going from the garden to parents and this is in the book adventist home parents your own home is the first field in which you are called to labor the precious plants in the home garden demand your first care 
To you it is appointed to watch for souls as they that must give account. Carefully consider your work, its nature, its bearing, and its results. And goes on, you have before you your own door before your own door a little plot of ground to care for, and God will hold you responsible for this work which is left in your hands. This is not now talking about this kind of garden, but the garden of the hearts of our children and how relevant it is that we have to have the, a good soil first of all, no hard bits in the soil, breaking up that soil. And then we have to be planting into the hearts of our children decent seeds, seeds that will cultivate a good character, a wholesome character in their lives. And then we have to nurture that with feeding them with the word of truth and guarding their associations, all the different things that we do to help cultivate the kind of character that we want in our children. And then the other beautiful aspect of this, and one which children absolutely love, is getting your children out here and being a part of this. Now, you'll be wondering for some of you that are a little bit more observant and looking and seeing that there's lots of these white these are Venetian blinds, came out of our house, the ones we were throwing away. And I use what we call the square foot gardening method. We can put links at the end of this to books about square foot gardening. There's a whole book about square foot gardening with children. And it's a great way to teach children how to grow. And whilst you're teaching the children how to grow, you can also be teaching them about their own hearts and all the kind of beautiful lessons that are there on the cultivation in their own hearts of seed so that as they grow, they will produce this kind of fruit, not only here, but in here as well. Anyway, God bless you. It's getting too hot to stay in here. We've turned off the big fans that circulate the air to keep it cool so that um, you wouldn't be deafened by the sound of the fans. But we need to get those back on because I'm beginning to pour <laughs> with perspiration because it's very warm in here. So anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoy this. If you've got any questions at all, please feel free to um, put those after this and I'll be happy to respond. God bless you until next time.